Hello everybody, I hope your studying is going well. Uh, what we're going to look at right now is sleight of mouth, Robert Dilts' sleight of mouth. This is one of the chunky processes from Master Practitioner where on the exam paper there's going to be a lot of marks that you can gain and pick up. So this is worth, worth getting to know. So first of all, sleight of mouth works on beliefs that are expressed in two ways. One as a cause effect and the other as a complex equivalence. So for example, if we take a belief such as uh, if it's raining then it's wet, which means I can't go out. You've got the cause effect, which is if it's raining, then it's gonna be wet, which means I can't go out. So on this side, you've got the cause effect. And on the other side, you have the complex equivalence. So where you have beliefs expressed in this way, then you can use the sleight of math patterns very effectively. So it's a cause effect, complex equivalence. If it's raining, then it's wet, which means I can't go out. So most beliefs will have this structure. Often they're just expressed as the end bit, I can't go out. And if you wanted to find out what the full structure is, you could say, well, why not? And said, well, because it's wet. So, well, if it's wet, if it's raining rather, then it's because it's raining. If it's raining, then it's wet, which means I can't go out. So now we've got the cause effect and the complex equivalence. So now we can get to work with the sleight of mouth. So I think probably the most effective way of learning sleight of mouth is to learn the iconography that Robert Dills created for sleight of mouth. So what we have is, if we say that this is the belief, so the belief is now expressed as the cause effect. If it's raining, then it's wet which means I can't go out. So there's the complex equivalence. So we've either got the cause effect or the complex equivalence. Cause effect, arrow, or complex equivalence equals means, right? So here's our belief. That's what we're gonna work with. So let's start to put the iconography on the page. The first icon that we're gonna put on the page is this tablet. It's a, like, almost like it looks like a gravestone. It's a little tablet. It's like Moses' 10 commandments coming down from the mountain. He's carrying these tablets and the commandments are what's important. So this symbol is the hierarchy of importance, what's important. So if we look at the example, if, if it's raining, then it's wet, which means I can't go out. If you were gonna use sleight of mouth on that, you might say something along the lines of, isn't it more important to live your life than be restricted by a little bit of water? So now we're using the hierarchy of importance to help the person rethink about their belief system and maybe change it. So the first one, the hierarchy of importance, hierarchy of importance. The next one is symbolized by this arrow going in this direction, which is forward. And this is consequence. So we're looking at the consequence. We're highlighting the consequence of a certain belief. So in other words, if you believe that, that if it was raining, then it was wet, then you couldn't go out. What would be the consequence of that? That every time it rained, you would stay in. You wouldn't do anything just because it was raining. What, what kind of life would that be for you if you did that? So again, we're looking at consequence. We're using consequence to reframe the belief. So moving on from consequence, we've got a blank page here, which is reminiscent of a place, really, that you can put more stuff. In other words, what we're looking for is something completely different here to, to start writing something new, which is another outcome. So the next pattern is represented by this icon of a blank page. It's another icon, outcome. You can write another, another outcome in that, that page. So for example, uh, you could say, well, the question isn't really about whether or not it's raining or whether or not uh, you, know, you, you can go out or not. The question really is, how, you know, how are you going to live your life? The question is about, are you the sort of person who's going to do something? You're going to make something of something, or are you the sort of person that's just going to just give in when something like that happens? So the question isn't really is whether or not you can go out. The question is, are you in charge of your life or not? So another outcome. So moving on from another outcome, we have metaphor, which is, in terms of the icon, is a scroll piece of paper. So a metaphor is a story, and a story has or contains the message or the learning. So in this case, it might be, if it's raining, then it's wet, which means I can't go out. So do you know what? I had a friend once who thought exactly the same, and whenever it rained, he would stay in, he'd phone him up, he wouldn't come out. And then I remember one day, we were all at somebody else's house, and we were looking through photo albums, and what he saw were pictures of all kinds of uh, activities and get-togethers that we'd had and fun that we'd had when we'd all got together as a group, whether it was raining or not, so lots of pictures where it was raining. And when he saw those pictures, 
he suddenly thought about all the things that he'd been missing out on. And he thought, if I could only have those occasions back, then I'd make sure that I actually went out and enjoyed myself as well, rather than staying in. And that was, that was, I remember that story really well. I remember that evening really well. So you're telling a story and there's a message in the story to help loosen the belief. Metaphor. After metaphor, we have this symbol here, a downward looking triangle. Uh, down, we're chunking down. That's what this symbol is. That's what the pattern is, chunking down. So chunking down would be getting very specific. So it could be, uh, how specifically does the fact that it's raining and that it's wet outside, how specifically does that mean that you can't go out? Make the person be specific. Uh, so chunking down. The opposite chunking up is also known as exaggerate or blow up in terms of sleight of mouth. So it would be something like, so let me get this straight. So every time there's a little bit of rain, you put your life on hold. We're exaggerating for effect, we're chunking up. Moving on, uh, we have a symbol which is a number one, there. and what that represents is one counterexample. That's what the symbol is for, one counterexample, because that's all you need to start to loosen the belief. So in this case, it could be, have you ever gone out when it has been raining and it was actually fine? If the person says yes, there's the counterexample, which casts doubt on the belief. If it's raining, then it's wet, then I, which means I can't go out. Well, actually, you've been out before in the rain. How was it? Fine. Well, there you go. So, a counterexample. Moving on, we have an arrow now in the opposite direction. And this arrow is an arrow pointing backwards. And this is all about intention. So you would say, for example, uh, I know that your intention is good. Obviously, it's to protect your clothing or not get a cold or whatever it may be. However, and then usually this pattern is linked with one of the other patterns. However, isn't it more important to live your life than worry about a bit of a bit of rain. Or, however, can you imagine what would happen to your life if you never went out when it was raining? Uh, so in other words, what we're doing is intention, yeah, I understand your intention, however, linking it to another pattern. So we're using the intention frame. Moving on, what we have here uh, are, are, that's the belief, cause, effect, complex equivalence. Underneath, two more boxes, and these boxes in terms of Diltz's iconography, refer to redefine. So we're redefining on the side of the cause effect, or we're redefining on the sort of the side of the complex equivalence. So if it's raining, then it's wet. So redefining might be, uh, so just because it's fresh, so we're redefining rain as fresh, we're changing the meaning by redefining it. So that's on that side, just because it's fresh. On the other side, um, if it's raining, then it's wet, which means I can't go out. Um, well, you could then redefine by saying, um, I live my life. So going out could then become redefined as live my life. So just, just because um, it's, it's a fresh outside means that you can't live your life. So we're redefining can't go out as not living your life. So redefine on cause effect and complex equivalence. Then we come up here and we have big circle, which is like a globe, which is a map of the world. So somebody's map of the world. So you could say, for example, what you're doing is looking at other people's experiences and using those to highlight the fact that this, this belief is not uh, particularly um, a good belief for them to have. Map of the world would be something like, you know, there are many people who would say that actually going out and feeling the rain on your face is what makes you feel alive. So there's a map of the world. You're taking somebody else's map of the world to help them shift the belief. Then there's a smaller circle here which represents reality. What's their reality? So now we want to be again specific. So, so how specifically is it that, uh, that, that raining or if the fact that it's raining means that you can't go out? It's a little bit, in this particular case, a little bit like chunking down, but what's the reality? How, how does that work? Tell me how that works. It's raining, you can't go out. What's, what's that all about? So you're asking them for their reality strategy. So that's the reality. Here above the, uh, the two the beliefs, the complex equivalence and the cause effect, you have this symbol with an arrow back on itself where we are now applying it to itself, which means that we take one of the words from, in this case, on this side, the cause effect and, the, and bring it back on itself. So if it's raining, then it's wet. So what you might say is, um, how many 
opportunities that could be raining down on you are you missing out on because you're not going out. So we're using raining back on itself. And on the other side, then I can't go out. So if it's raining, then it's wet, which means I can't go out. So let's apply I can't go out back on itself. And you could say something like, you know what, you, you'd go out of your mind if you never went out just because it's raining. Go out of your mind. So we're using go out back on itself. You go out of your mind. Uh, so then we have in the middle here another symbol, which is picture frame in the middle. And this is about reframing. So reframing, you change the frame, you know, about time frames and all that kind of stuff. So if we reframe this as something, so a reframe might be classic reframing. If it's raining, then it's wet, which means I can't go out. So reframing that would be something along the lines of um, again using the freshness. You know, isn't 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 it great to actually have the opportunity to go out and experience nature? So we change the frame. So the meaning of I can't go out is now changed to actually it's an opportunity to ex experience nature. So we've reframed it. It's actually not going out in the rain, it's going out and experiencing nature. How fantastic is that? So we're reframing the belief, which is, means, either, as we know, context or content reframes, what else could it mean? So we're changing the meaning of that. And then finally, we have something here which is called a meta frame. So the meta frame, that's in meta, we, we, we step outside, we're looking abo above, so everything is underneath. And we could then say in this example, so the meta frame might be, so what you're really saying is that you're not in control of your choices. That would be the meta frame. Yeah, so what you're really saying is you're not in control of your own choices. If it's raining and it's wet, you can't go out. What that really means then is you're not in control. That would be a meta frame. So then if we count them, there should be 16. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Those are the 16 patterns of sleight of mouth. Just to recap, we have the hierarchy of importance. Isn't it more important to? Uh, the consequence. Well, can you imagine what would happen if blah, 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 consequence. Another outcome. The question really isn't about whether or not it's raining or you should go out. The question really is whatever you then say the question is. A metaphor, well, there was this person who, we're telling a story, chunking down, let's get specific. How exactly does that work? Um, uh, or what specifically do you mean by that, whatever it may be? Chunking up, blow up, exaggerate. So what you're saying is, I got a little bit of rain and the whole world has to stop. Uh, another outcome, so, sorry, a prompt, uh, counter example. Have you ever been out in the rain? It's been fine? Well, there you go. Uh, then we've got the redefine, so we're actually changing the meaning of a word. So rain becomes fresh, for example. Uh, so that's redefine. We've got intention. So I understand your intention is X, Y, and Z, and then link it to one of the others. Uh, however, have you considered the consequence of that? Uh, we've got map of the world, so map of the world, you know, other people say, or doctors say, or somebody says, or whatever it is, somebody else's map of the world, which is a different take on the belief. Uh, reality, well, how, how exactly is that true? In what way is that true? And then we've got apply to self, where we take the word and we spin it back on itself in the way that we wish it to be. So um, if it's raining, well, what kind of opportunities you, uh, it could be raining down on you, are you missing because you're not going out? Apply to self on, um, I can't go out. Well, I go out of my mind, or you go out of your mind if you never went out. So turning the word back on itself. Reframing, again, classic reframing, give it a different meaning by putting a different frame around it. Uh, and then, of course, meta frame, which is the bigger picture above, beyond. Uh, so what you're really saying is, in this case, you're not in control of your life. Cool. So those are 16 different patterns of the sleight of mouth uh, process, if you like, from Robert Diltz. Uh, you can mix and match them, uh, do what you like with them. However, it's very useful to have them in your back pocket because it, they are very, very powerful. And the best way that I have found to learn these is to learn the icons. First of all, start with these four. Draw these four. You can start with any four, but for argument's sake, these four. Uh, hierarchy of importance, consequence, another outcome, and metaphor. When you've learned those, then you can get to grips with what they really mean. Then move on to another four, maybe these four here. Chunking down, chunking up, redefine, redefine. Redefine on uh, complex equivalence, redefine on cause effect. Over here, boom, 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 we could have, okay, as a counter example, that's intention, that's map of the world. Then here, uh, reality, maybe you're drawing this, this, and this. Reality, apply to self and uh, reframe. And then, of course, above it all, meta frame, is the meta frame. So once you get that in your back pocket, 
once you are able to list the, uh, the patterns of the sleight of mouth, and then you can begin to link what they mean, you're going to get this pattern, this, this process, if you like, sleight of mouth, under your belt very quickly. You'll be able to list those, and this is where you're going to make up marks on the exam paper. So that you know your sleight of mouth, not only do you know the iconography, you know what they mean, uh, and you are able to list and label them. I hope that helps, and please leave some comments, uh, some questions, and let's get sleight of mouth under our belts so we don't have to uh, be struggling for points when it comes to the exam, because you'll get a whole bunch of points just by knowing this process. Thanks very much.